right way. Well, good, thanks. <laughs> sorted now? Yeah. <laughs> Do you like doing this? Are you nervous? Or no, no, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. So I've been helping a few companies lately with programming, training some staff, um, up trying to upskill companies so they're ready for the next few years for when the uh, you know the skill shortage seems to just be going one way. So trying to trying to get them prepared for what's to come in the future. So far it has. I've helped a number of companies. Uh, these these companies uh, keep coming back to me for sort of regular work and they've recommended me to other companies, which is always nice. So yeah, I'd say so far, and, and judging by the results that we've had, it's been very successful. I've chosen to do this because after spending 20 years in the industry and, and talking and meeting a lot of people, I, I became to realise that a lot of people are struggling with the same problems. And I thought I've got the skills and experience and contacts to be able to help with these problems. So it, it, for me, it was an obvious choice. The ultimate goal is to help as many companies as I can, help them grow, watch them go from breaking even or even making a loss to making big profits. That would give me great satisfaction. Training staff, training even apprentices, so I can give back to engineering and, and know that I've done my bit in the years to, to give back to the industry. So initially I go into a company to help with some programming, they may have a bottleneck in their programming department. So I, I go in there and while I'm working on site, I start spotting other problems, which are the machines might not be running. Staff might say, oh, we don't know this, we should know that. And there's all these different problems kind of evolve over time as I get familiar with the business. And from that, I start suggesting more room, more things to change. So when I go into a company, often I'm initially dealing with the managing director who quite often oversees some of the smaller problems, which all have a big impact on the business operating. So, for example, recently I was in a company where they initially got me in to do some programming. Whilst I was in there programming some of their machines, I realised that actually they had quite a few other problems which needed addressing, which had huge impact on the business, their customers, their delivery dates. And I think it was almost an oversight because they're, they were purely focused on trying to get these parts out the door, but didn't actually focus on the problems which caused these parts to be delayed. So I, I then suggested some um, changes that needed implementing. And once we'd done that, the, the business was flown a lot more successfully. So I can work remote or I can work on site, depending on what the client needs. I have actually been talking to a company in Germany that want me to do some offline programming for them, which I can do remote from my office. Alternatively, you know, if it's a UK customer, I can work remote or on site. So when a company's busy, they obviously don't have enough staff, but when they're quiet, they've got too many staff. So it creates a little bit of um, a problem, you know, in the peaks and troughs of, of any business. The beauty of using myself is that when they're busy, they can use my services, but when they're quiet, they can put a stop on it and, and sort of cut their spending. So I started 20 years ago as an apprentice doing day release to college. And from that, I grew into a, um, skilled engineer after my four-year apprenticeship. I started off working on manual miller machines, manual laves. I then moved on to semi-automatic laves and semi-automatic mills. And after a couple of years, I then moved on to full CNC machining centres. I've worked around a number of companies. I've worked in, the, in Australia, I've worked in New Zealand, and I've had my own company in the UK. Over the years, I've worked on a number of uh, Formula One projects, m making components for some of the leading race teams in, in Formula One. Um, we've worked with a number of uh, materials making all different types of components. I think when you work in the same environment every day it can be easy to oversee the small problems which will create a huge impact on the business and they often say when you're stuck in the box you miss these, miss these problems. When a fresh pair of eyes comes into the business it can often I could spot problems very easily and come up with a solution to rectify these problems. I recently went into a machine shop that was running this very expensive machine on a five-year contract making the same parts over and over again. The customer said to me that they'd worked out that this job was only making £40 an hour which wasn't enough to cover the costs of the machine, the tooling, the coolant and, and the staff and everything that went with it. They, they brought me in to see whether I could improve the process of, of making these parts 
And after spending a few days there and completely redesigning the, the fixture and reprogramming the job, retooling it, and basically starting from scratch, we've taken this job from 40 pound an hour, loss making, to turning over 120 pound an hour, which turned it into a very profitable job. So I go into a lot of companies that have adopted automation in the last five years, but I still don't see enough companies that are out there with automated machines. With my help, they could help implement automation to making themselves become more profitable. They could get their uh, efficiency up and I could also help train their staff to be able to understand automation and help with what's required to get these machines running around the clock. So I think the big thing with automation is that people are scared of the investment and the most common saying that I hear is, I don't have the right work to put this onto an automated machine. A lot of people think you need thousands offs and hundreds of thousands off to make an automated machine work, when actually you can automate a machine with a five off, a 10 off, or even a 20 off. A lot of people don't realize that you can make an automated machine work with any work, you just need the right way of doing it. I enjoy what I do and I'm very passionate about it. My customers have been very happy with me so far and everything that I've achieved with them and we continue to see great results. Perfect. Beautiful. Well done.